Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and I get asked a lot of little questions about viscometers and viscosity of products. So today's video is going to show you how we measure viscosity and also talk you through a few spindles and how we select the spindles and the speed of testing. So I'm gonna be using the Ica Rotovisc. So this is the equipment I'm gonna be using here. The very first thing I need to talk you through is the different types of spindles. If there is obvious flow of the product such that you can see it flowing without any sort of force, you should be using your disc spindles. If the product doesn't have obvious flow, like a viscous cream, even a very viscous gel, but definitely your paste, see there's no obvious flow, the product's not flowing at all, then you need to be using your T spindles. So now that we've talked about the different types of spindles you need, how do you know which spindle to use? For example, here is a set of the disc spindles. Now, what you can see here is they are all different sizes. So I will use a different size spindle for different viscosities of products. And so too with my T-spindles, I have a whole range of different sizes of spindles. And I'll show you this little kit as well. So how do I know which size spindle? And then we have another factor, when we put it into the viscometer, we can change the speed at which the spindle turns. So how do we know which size spindle and how do we know which speed? Well, if the product has been tested before, we need to make sure we're using the same size spindle and same speed that was specified before. We also need to make sure that we're controlling the temperature and testing the product at the same temperature that it was tested before. Now, if we don't have this prior information, we need to do a little bit of trial and error testing. And then we can record exactly what temperature, spindle size, and RPM was used to conduct our test and our viscosity reading. Now it's at this point, you might think it sounds a little complicated, it's actually not, and I'll show you how easy it is to set all of these criteria in a moment. But the really important thing to remember is a different temperature, a different spindle size, or a different RPM of that spindle turning will give you a different viscosity result. Which is why if you have these details, you should be using the same conditions to test the product at various stages to check your batch consistency and stability, the viscosity stability of the product over time. So sometimes you might see out there that someone wants a cream that's say 50,000 centipoise. That's really not relevant information because to achieve 50,000 centipoise, it may be from various spindle sizes. It may be from various RPM. So we really need to make sure that we're using the same spindle and RPM to ensure we get consistent and valid results over different time points when stability testing or when comparing different batches of manufacture. Let me show you how this works in action with different spindles and different speeds and some different products and you'll soon see what I mean. Now this is the Ica Rotovisc here, and this is what we're gonna be using to conduct our viscosity testing. Now I wanna show you a couple of really important features of this particular equipment. Um, first of all, you can see it lets me know if it is not fully balanced. Now this is important because obviously if I have one of my disc spindles at a bit of an angle, I won't get an accurate reading. So I'm just going to adjust this height. until you can see it's balanced and it gives me an okay message. Now I can select the spindle and speed I want to use. And for the gel, I'm going to start by picking spindle nine, which is this spindle here. So first of all, I need to change my selection of spindle here to SP9. And I'm going to start with a low RPM of just 15. Now in this reading, you can also see the maximum viscosity that would be achieved with this spindle and this speed. 
And now we're ready to load our spindle and our product and conduct the test. Now it's really important when loading the product and the spindle that it's done at a bit of an angle. And now once we've loaded our spindle into our product, we start the test. Now what you can see here is that disc turning rather slowly. It's just 15 RPM. And we wait for that spindle to make at least five complete revolutions before we take the reading. Now what it's measuring is the resistance to flow. And we can see the measurement up here on the screen of the viscosity. Now there's a couple of really important things we can also see on the screen. We can see the temperature is at 20 degrees. We can also see a percent reading here. Now when you're taking a viscosity reading, you wanna make sure that that's between 10% and 100%. And then that will give you suitable accuracy with your reading. So we can see here spindle nine at 15 RPM is giving us a viscosity result of 2,480. But if we were to use either a different spindle or a different speed, you'll actually see that viscosity result becomes different, which is why it's so important if the test already exists to use the same spindle and speed, or when you're recording viscosity that you also record the spindle size used and the RPM used. Otherwise you'll get a different viscosity reading every time. Let me show you what happens. I'm going to first increase the RPM and you'll see the disc move a lot faster, but you also see that the viscosity reading is significantly different. So now I'm just going to change the spindle and I'm also going to change the speed back to 15 RPM and you'll see we get yet another viscosity reading. So you can now see the spindle, it's spindle eight. We can see it's moving at 15 RPM. We can check our reading here is between 10 and 100%, which it is. And we can see we have a different viscosity reading as well. Now see how the numbers are jumping around a little, that will settle once the spindle has completed a few more revolutions. That's why it's important to let the spindle have at least five clear revolutions and also that your viscometer is completely balanced when you're doing your viscosity readings. Now, if this was to read over 100%, then we would need to use a slower speed or a smaller spindle. If this was reading under 10%, we need to use a higher speed or a larger spindle. So no matter what I use, it's important that I record the spindle size and speed and the viscosity result obtained, as well as the temperature. Because if the temperature is different, the spindle is different or the speed is different next time I test this product, I'll end up with a very different viscosity reading. And it won't be that the product has necessarily changed viscosity, it would be that I've changed one of these other parameters which can impact my viscosity reading. So now let's take a look at how we use a T-spindle to take the viscosity of a much more viscous product.
So now I am taking my reading using TSP4 spindle at 20 RPM. And you can see it making its revolutions here. Remember we need to wait for at least five of these revolutions to be complete before we look at that reading. Now we can see that our percentage reading here is a little on the low side. Remember we want that to be between 10% and 100%. So if I want to make that a little higher, I will use a larger spindle and I'll still use the same RPM. So now I am taking the reading using TSP2, so spindle 2, at 20 RPM. And you can see my percentage reading here is now a lot higher, but the viscosity reading has also changed significantly. We can see it making its revolutions here. So that's how we take viscosity readings. So hopefully you can see that it was really important to specify not just the actual viscosity, but the spindle and the RPM that was used. Also to record the temperature of the room when the test was conducted. Because the size of the spindle, the temperature of the room, and the speed at which the spindle is turning can all impact that viscosity result. So remember we take these viscosity readings to make sure that we have batch to batch consistency, that each batch has a similar viscosity when it's made. We also use these viscosity readings to track viscosity changes over time when we're conducting stability testing to help us check and see if there are significant viscosity changes of the product over time. Again, it's very important to use the same temperature, spindle size and speed to make sure that these readings are relevant and useful for comparison purposes. Otherwise, they have no relevance if a different spindle, speed or temperature has been used because that viscosity result relies on all of these items being kept consistent. As mentioned, if you're checking for batch to batch consistency or stability over time, you should use the details of previous tests to help you use the same spindle speed and temperature. And if you don't have anything to go by, then you pick your spindle based on the flow properties of the product and its relevant viscosity and readings you obtain in a little bit of a trial and error manner to get the right spindle and speed to give you an accurate reading. I hope this has been helpful for you to understand how we test viscosity and why we test viscosity and the parameters that are important to be kept the same between different viscosity tests of the same product over time. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.